Along with its unparalleled visualization capabilities of ground investigation data in 3D space, implicit geological modeling is one of LeapFrog's core functionalities. Once the basic modeling concepts are mastered, you will save lots of valuable time on model generation and updating. The powerful functionality that is available in the Geological Models folder isn't just restricted to lithology. The tools found there can be used to model any categorical data, such as geotechnical zones, weathering, CPT data, and much more. In this video, I will demonstrate how to set up a basic geological model, and throughout the next several videos, we'll see how to build and modify the surfaces in the model to get your desired results. Before creating a geological model, it's a good idea to have a topography in the project if applicable. If a topography surface exists in the project before a model is created, like I have in this project, it will automatically be used to trim the model extents. To create a new geological model, right-click the Geological Models folder and select New Geological Model. The New Geological Model window will appear here you can set a few parameters for the model, including the base lithology column to use, the surface resolution, the model extents, and the name. Start with selecting the base lithology column from the drop-down list. The base lithology is the column containing the data that will be used for the geological model. If the model is being created from a geological map, or from a different data type that isn't available in the Base Lithology drop-down, you can select None from the drop-down list. This will let you define the lithologies manually once the geological model has been created. I will use the Group Lith column, which I created in LeapFrog using the grouping functionality as discussed in a previous video. You want to carefully consider and then choose the appropriate column for your Base Lithology as it is the only model parameter that cannot be changed once the geological model has been created. While there are workflows that allow you to access data in different columns or tables throughout the modeling process, they are more complex and beyond the scope of this video series. I'm going to skip over the surface resolution and come back to it in a minute. Note for now that the default resolution in the model is currently 600. Next, I'll define the model extents. The model extents allow the user to define the minimum and maximum extents of the model in the X, Y, and Z directions. To quickly set useful extents, use the Enclose Object drop-down box, which gives you a list of the objects in the project which can be used to base the extents on. I will use this object and select the Geology table which changes the extents of the model to match the extents of the drilling. A second option for setting extents is to use the red arrows to change the extents in the XY directions and the pink arrows to change the vertical extent. I will increase the max Z value to ensure the topography is fully captured. A third option is to simply manually enter values into the boxes. Now we will come back to the surface resolution. The surface resolution is a very important parameter for the model because it controls how coarse or how fine the generated surfaces will be. If you noted the resolution before we reduced the model extents, you will notice that when I reduced the model extents, the resolution reduced as well. That's because the default resolution will be set based on the data available in the project. Even though the resolution reduced in conjunction with the model extents, it often needs to be reduced further to give more definition to the surfaces. To put that into context, the lower the surface resolution value, like 2 or 20, the smaller the triangles are and the more definition the surface will have. A higher surface resolution value, like 200 or 600 or higher, will take less time to process, but the surfaces may not show the level of detail required. Keep in mind, the resolution value units match whatever units your LeapFrog project is in. For example, if your project units are meters, a resolution of 200 means that each triangle making up the surface is 200 meters in size. What constitutes an appropriate resolution 
is dependent on the extents of your project data, the purposes of the model, and the relative size and complexity of each of your modeled units. The default resolution that LeapFrog assigned based on the extents gives a good indication of what we can reduce it to without having to wait too long for processing. Typically, reducing the resolution by an order of magnitude from the default value is a decent place to start. I'll change the surface resolution to 20, which will make the length of the sides of the triangle approximately 20 meters long. You don't have to agonize over an appropriate resolution right at the beginning, as the resolution of the entire model or individual surfaces within the model can be changed at any time throughout the modeling process to suit your needs. This will be reviewed in a subsequent video. Finally, enter a suitable name for your model and click OK.